Ready? Aloha, and welcome to part 10 of Mega Man X7. We are on the last Maverick, folks, Vanishing Gungaroo. And his stage starts off pretty goddamn dark. It was so dark when I was playing on my friend BJ's television that I couldn't see what I was doing half the time. And maybe it's because he had to adjust the brightness on his TV. I could see it fine on my TV, but, uh, you know. If you see me running into walls every now and then, it's really because I have a hard time seeing things right now. The only reason I'm dodging this enemy right here is because I can see the lasers. But I digress. Also, I want to update. Uh, when I was looking on IMDB, I was looking up the voice actors for Mega Man X7 because I was convinced Axel, the guy who plays Axel, actually did Omo Chow in Sonic Adventure 2. Turns out they're not the same voice actor. They just sound very similar, don't they? But actually, I found out that Red's voice actor... He is Barry Burton from the from the original Resident Evil, so that's why he sounds so similar. It is him. He is making a Jill sandwich. Good God! Well, it's nice to see his great acting carried on. What do you mean? <laughs> Seriously, are there any uh, Mega Man X7 YouTube poops? Because good lord. Anywho. In the second part, there is an acid pool, and I'm not sure if it's a one-hit kill or if it just damages you. I don't remember. Uh, I'm gonna assume it's a one-hit kill. I don't know why. You can run right to the exit and go to the next section, but uh, I'm not gonna do that. I'm instead gonna jump over to this crate and find something that has finally been updated since Mega Man X4. The Ride Armor. In X4, X5, X6, they used the same bare-bones basic ride armor, that pink one with the fucking claw, but finally, X7, being a new 3D game, gives us a new fucking ride armor. The Spider Walker, motherfuckers! It's got six legs, it runs pretty fast, and you feel like such a badass riding in this thing. I will admit, this is the funnest part of Mega Man X7, the spider ride armor is so goddamn fun to dr drive around in and smash shit up with. It can walk in acid and spikes, just like every other ride armor in the series, so you'll do pretty good. And, uh, obviously, you won't lose health as long as you're in it. And, you know, preserving your health is always good. That's the fidgety thing about the exit, too. I remember once I touched the door and nothing happened, so I left immediately, trying to look for another exit. You have to, like, sort of walk into that door for, like, two seconds before it actually opens up. I know that can keep, catch people a little bit off guard, and for good reason. Anyway, the Spider Walker, uh, as long as you're in it, you won't lose health, and it has basically two attacks. You can swing your drill claw thing, you can jump on people, and uh, I remember sometimes when you jump, he creates this little explosion effect when he lands that attacks all enemies around it. I couldn't get it to work for some reason when I tried it. But oh well. Because of the ride armors, this level's actually pretty easy. You don't ever have to get out of it, ever, as soon as you find it. And really, it doesn't matter how high your health is, it doesn't matter how high your armor is. If you just stay in the ride armor the whole level, you'll do pretty good. The thing is, the boss, the Maverick itself, you may want his weakness, because he's kind of annoying. Though, the, the one weakness about having 3D boss fights is that literally all you're doing is dash, dashing out of the way every time you hear them talk, and shooting whenever you can, and I guess... I think I've beaten Vanishing Gunguru with just the X-Buster before. Or just the Axle Pistols, or whatever. Ready? And yes, we have just run into like four or five different load times. Fuck X7 and its frequent load times, why can't you just load one big level? Ah, I know this is the PlayStation 2, but Jesus. Anyway, with that right armor destroyed, I jumped into another big blue one, which is like a machine gun, and all you do is you hold the square button down, occasionally aiming where you're shooting, and then everything dies. We're pretty much at the Maverick right now, the only reason we can't get to him right now is because we have to kill all these enemies. It's a, it's a uh, you know, kill everything in the room and then you'll progress kind of situation. In the bottom right, we'll eventually see a how many targets remaining, and you just have to kill like 20 or so ride armors, and once they're all dead, we can finally base off with Vanishing Gungaroo. 
But yeah, I just want to thank X7 for introducing new ride armors. I don't know what the fuck they were thinking with X5 and X6. It's like, X5 was supposed to be the last game in the series, they didn't bother updating the ride armor. Okay, I guess. X6 is a train wreck, and because it was half-assed, they just decided, hey, let's use the ride armor that was in X5. Problem, it was in X4, too! Three games, and the ride armor was the same. Jesus. I mean, X4 also had that blue one in, in Storm Owl stage, but that thing didn't come back in X5 or X6. So I always think of the pink claw machine as the the PlayStation 1 ride armor, because it never deviated from that, and I always hated that. Make sure your ride armor's intact, because you'll be bringing them into the boss fight. Toodles! Well, not toodles, but plot. Haha. -ha. Destroy! 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 <laughs> Look at me! Look at me! I'm king of the mountain! Stop it! Stop it right there! Do you know how hard we work to rebuild this world? Ah, shut up! Don't order me around, you pile of scrap metal! Shoot. Looks like there's no choice but to fight. So there's actually two phases to the Vanishing Gungaroo fight. He starts off in his own kangaroo ride armor, and if you had a ride armor, if you were in a ride armor when you killed the last target, it'll become available for this boss fight. So this is kind of like uh, Magma Dragoon in Mega Man X4. Magma Dragoon and Vanishing Gungaroo are the only bosses you can bring your ride armor into battle with, like in into the Maverick fight. But regardless, uh, you'd think having a ride armor would destroy his ride armor and be his weakness or something, but I actually find it's not that easy to do. It's so hard to get away when you're in the ride armor, it's a very slow, clunky piece of shit. And, you know, the X-Buster does pretty good damage regardless. Plus, it's, you're so much faster on foot than with the ride armor that, uh, you know... It's good to have, I guess, so that you don't take damage, but really, X as a normal... normal Reploid is pretty good. You destroy his kangaroo ride armor, and then he gets out hopping all over the place. He'll always take this occasional dive at you, and every time he does, he goes, TRIANGLE DIVE, or TRIANGLE KICK, or whatever the fuck he says. All I know is he says triangle a lot, and when you hear triangle, you know to dash out of the fucking way. If you're deaf, and you can't hear what I'm saying right now, ha <laughs> ha! No, <laughs> I'm kidding. But, uh, if you're deaf, obviously, this boss fight's gonna be so much harder, because you're always listening for that TRIANGLE! If you can't hear triangle, then, you know, you're fucked. He'll always dash into you when you least expect it, and you're constantly moving the camera with the L1, R1 buttons as well, which is also a real pain in the ass. His weakness is obviously, uh, Wind Crowrang's ability, so... When I'm zero, I bring out the V-Hanger weapon, and... I just keep shooting at it. I can use it unlimited amount of times, it just... goes forward and comes back to you, and you just push the triangle button with it equipped... and just keep hitting him, and hitting him, and hitting him, and hitting him. The thing I find about X7 weaknesses, some of them do a big chunk of damage, some of them just stun the enemies, and, you know... They don't do that much damage, and it just makes the fight that much more longer and unbearable. Like, come on, just end it. I hit him, like, five times, and I didn't even take off that much health. It's supposed to be his weakness. I don't want it to stun him, I want him to kill him. But I digress. And really, it's as easy as that. If you, have, if you have the V-Hanger, you just keep hitting him and hitting him and hitting him. And if you... don't, well, you're gonna have to be good on your dash jumping and good on your lock-on shooting with X or Axel, because he's always hopping all over the place and he's kind of annoying to catch. But still, folks, we beat Vanishing Gungaroo! We beat the last Maverick of the fucking game! Huzzah! And we, re we rescued the last of the Reploids that we're going to rescue. By defeating Vanishing Gungaroo, we get... Hidengen Gungigi! <laughs> he creates a little fire... Wor a fire... He creates a nice fire slash when he does the triangle button, and X and Axel, I believe, also shoot fire. Uh... Again, I, I can't remember. X7 I haven't played in ages, and I'm sorry if you wanted a more informative X7 LP. I'm doing the best if I can, but really... 
I always take Soldier Stonecon on first, and if I can, I just use the X-Buster on him in the boss rush, because the X-Buster is so overpowered. I never bothered to find out what Soldier Stonecon's weakness a weapon was. So, you know. I just don't care. <laughs> Once again, if you do a New Game Plus, all of those orange upgrades will stay there when you restart the game. But the Reploids will respawn, so you can resave the Reploids and re-get the chips that will, you know, increase your stats. Which is always swell. Anyway folks, we're going to find the Professor and Red and go to the final castle in Part 11. See you then.